All right, y'all. Thank you so much for hanging in there and welcome again to our Tiger Family Talks webinar. Tonight, we're going to be focusing on supporting your tiger's academic success. We are doing our webinar series all, all throughout the fall on several Tuesdays. And at the end of this presentation, we will share the link to all of the webinars with you. We hope you'll tune in and make the most and get all of the great resources out of all of our webinars that we're offering this fall. My name is Lindsay McCrory, and I have the pleasure of serving as the Manager of Parent and Family Programs. Our office is dedicated to helping families just like you and providing resources and information to help you support your tiger's success. We are so excited that you're joining us. I want to go over just a little bit of housekeeping before we find out where all of you are joining us from. So for notes, we are doing this via Zoom and Facebook Live. So thanks to everyone joining us via either platform. Um, if you're on Zoom, we have a couple of features I want to point out. So at the bottom of your screen, you're going to see the chat button. If you click on that, the chat is a great place to insert an emoji or say hi, hello, introduce yourself, and just make a quick comment. If you have a question for any of our panelists or a question for our team or staff, you can put that in the Q&A feature. So those are two separate features. At the end of this presentation, we will be going over the questions that you submit in that Q&A and we'll be answering those live for you at the end. If you're on Facebook, just go ahead and put your comments in the comments section. Say hi, hello, ask your questions there too. We'll be taking questions at the end from Zoom and our Facebook Live. So thank y'all so much. I do want to know now where you're from. So if you're on Zoom in the chat section, go ahead and introduce yourself. Let me know if you have a freshman tiger or an upperclassman, where you're joining us from. We're so excited to see you. Same goes for Facebook Live. Go ahead and put that in the comments. I want to know where y'all are from. I know it's rolling in right now. All right, a freshman from Baton Rouge, perfect, local. Houston, freshman tiger, awesome. Los Angeles, Nicole, we have a panelist joining us from California, so your neck of the woods. Ridgeland, Mississippi, sophomore from Charlotte, North Carolina. Hi, Kalita, it's so good to see you, a junior. Go Tigers. Renee from New Orleans, perfect, with a freshman. One of our panelists is from New Orleans. Denison, Texas, freshman. Awesome. Okay, so it really looks like people are joining us from all over and different classifications. I think it's important to highlight that adjusting to an online or web-based courses or really succeeding academically is something that a lot of students face and are still struggle with that adjustment, um, whether they are first year students or senior Tigers. Everyone can take advantage of the resources that we're gonna talk about tonight. So I'm excited to see y'all coming from all over. Uh, if you're joining us tonight, maybe it's because your student is struggling academically. So you already know you've got to figure out some resources to point them in the right direction to get connected and plugged in to know how to make the most of this semester. Or maybe your student is telling you that they're overwhelmed and need some assistance with time management. Or maybe your student hasn't shared any concerns yet. Maybe they don't talk a lot, but you feel like it might be on the horizon or you just want to be prepared proactively. Or maybe your tiger is doing awesome, but you want to know just a little bit of supplemental information to make sure that they're on the right track. Whatever the reason is that you're joining us tonight, we really hope you get something out of this information that we're going to share. And we really encourage you to ask those questions that you've been considering at the end of this presentation. Once we have our speakers and panelists um, go over great, great resources and tools. So many of our tigers are experiencing some challenges or hitting some roadblocks or things that they may not have experienced when they were in high school because that transition from high school academics to college academics is a big one and our panelists will talk about that a little bit later or maybe your tiger is an upperclassman and they're just not used to this web-based format and being in remote classes and so what we want to talk about tonight is that your student is not alone and that we have great information, resources, staff here on campus that want to help support your tiger and make sure that they are able to succeed academically. I am joined tonight by Anna. 
Anna is um, over in the Center for Academic Success. She has a wealth of information to provide you. She's going to share some great resources and then our panelists will talk about their experience as well. So if you have a specific question for our panelists, you can put that in the Q&A while we're talking. Um, if you have a question that's unrelated to tonight's topic, or maybe you have concerns about the modality or format in which your Tigers class is being offered, we encourage you instead of putting that in the Q&A or commenting on that to just email our office directly at lsufamily at lsu.edu and we'll link our contact information at the end of this. But if you have a question related to tonight's topics or something that our panelists or speakers say sparks a question, go ahead and put that in the Q&A or the comments section. So I'm so excited to be joined by Anna. At this time, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to her. She's gonna share her screen and give you some great information from the Center for Academic Success. Anna. Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Thank you so much for having me here tonight. I'm really excited to talk to you all about a lot of the resources we have available here for your tires, for your students here at LSU. Um, and Lindsay is absolutely right. If they are experiencing any of the challenges that she just mentioned before, your tiger is not alone. We've been seeing a lot of students this semester with some of those same concerns. So um, y'all are here to learn about how y'all can help uh, support their your students' academic success and one of the best ways to do that is to be aware of the resources that are available to your student um, and so that you can help them become aware of the resources that they can reach out to and use to help themselves. So uh, just a little bit about myself. Uh, yes, my name is Anna Hammonds. I am a program coordinator with the Center for Academic Success. Please feel free to take note of my email address, ahammonds1 at lsu.edu. Uh, you are absolutely welcome to uh, send me an email uh, if you have any questions about the information we go over in the presentation today. If you are interested in sending an email to just the general CAS email address, that is also on here, cas at lsu.edu. Um, we monitor that daily, so uh, I encourage you to reach out if you have any questions. And so just a little bit about who we are here at CAS and here at the Center for Academic Success, uh, what we do is we support student learning and there's a variety of ways we do it. But what we're really going to focus on today is uh, how we support students with content learning and how we support students through providing resources to help them with optimizing learning strategies. And so these are the things we're really going to be focusing on in this evening's presentation, the resources that can help support your student with these particular areas. And so you might be thinking, you know, how do I know which resources could be best for my, my tiger, right? And so one of the things that you should be uh, thinking about is say, if you hear your students say things like, you know, I need to learn kind of how to study or I don't know how to study for this class. We hear from a lot of students who come in for coaching appointments, especially if they are first semester freshmen, they often say, you know, I didn't really have to study very much in high school. I was always okay with reading my notes a couple times and, you know, that was enough and I was good to go. And I'm recognizing that that's not going to work for me here. So uh, if you hear your students say things like that, like they, you know, want to learn how to study for classes, or if they feel like their performance is not really matching their potential, or even if their performance isn't matching the work that they're putting in, these, um, as well as if they are struggling with balancing their time, that is something I was saying earlier today, for me, at least in the coaching sessions that I've had in my meetings with students, if there were a theme, if there was a theme for, you know, fall 2020, it would be time management. So if you're hearing your uh, students say things like this, like I, I need to kind of learn how to study better, you know, I really want to do better on my exams and I really, you know, need some support with balancing my time. I'm going to go over a set of resources that can help them optimize their learning strategies and address those challenges. But you may be thinking, that's not what I'm hearing from my student. I'm hearing something else. Maybe you hear them say, you know, I'm in my chemistry class and I'm listening to the instructor, but I'm still having a hard time understanding content. I need some support in learning the content in the class. Um, maybe they're saying, you know, I have all these online classes and 
I really want an opportunity to talk to people about the content, to have a dialogue and a discussion. Um, I want an opportunity to learn in groups with some peers. We have some resources that can help them with that. And I think especially some of our group opportunities have been really uh, working well for a lot of our students this semester because they spend so much time on their own that they're really looking for opportunities to engage with other students with material. So if those are the kinds of things you're hearing your tiger say, I'm gonna go over a pack of resources that we offer students to help address those concerns. And so the first set I'm gonna go over are the learning strategies. So these again, just to kind of recap, these are the students who are saying, I need some help with you know, understanding how to study, and then also maybe if they need some help with time management. So the first two I'm gonna go over would be our learning tips and tools website, as well as our CAS learning journey. And the, both of these resources are really good for a student where maybe they don't wanna have a conversation, they kind of just wanna independently Re, you know, look at information, watch videos, go through our tools and our websites and that kind of thing independently on their own time. That's what these two resources are really good for. So our learning tips and tools can be found on our website and our website I'll provide for y'all at the end of this presentation. And what we have there is we have a lot of information on things like how to study, our study cycle, how to manage your time, as well as handouts on tools to help them plan and work through those things um, and information. So that's a really good resource for students who want to independently look at these things. The LSU RCAS learning journey is a really good option for this as well. It's a little bit different than our online tips and tools. It's actually a Moodle course. It is completely optional though. Um, it does not impact student GPA. It is there to help provide uh, information that students could find useful. So uh, it provides information and has all of our handouts. It has videos. It's a little bit more, uh, fuller than what is on our learning tips and tools. Plus, what's really nice about the LSU learning journey is there are journal assigned, you know, journal activities and things like that where students can apply the information and then they actually get feedback from us, the academic coaches, about how well they did. You know, are you really getting uh, the right ideas about this information and how to use it? So that's why the CAS learning journey is a really nice option as well for students who want to look at our resources a bit more independently. Now, if your tiger is a first semester freshman, they are actually already enrolled in this class. All first semester freshmen were auto enrolled in this course. So they already have access to all of these tools and information. However, if you have, uh, if your tiger is an upperclassman, and uh, they still can join the LSU Moodle course, they would just need to self-enroll. And so it's a very simple process. They would just go to their Moodle page, scroll to the bottom, and in the search courses, they would type in CAS Learning Journey. From there, we would pop up immediately, and then you would click CAS Learning Journey, scroll to the bottom, and select Enroll Me. So any student at LSU can enroll in this Learning Journey Moodle course and have access to all of our resources and tons of information and videos and things like that that cover a lot of really helpful information. So uh, the, next, uh, the next service that we supply for students to kind of help them uh, with their academic goals and academic success is we offer a series of workshops every semester. At this point in the semester, we only have one left. Uh, we actually had our last math workshop earlier today, uh, but we do have one more workshop in November, and that is to help students prepare for final exams and to help them manage that stress that tends to come with that time of the semester. Um, and just for some of the things we cover in that one, that's actually a, a presentation I normally do. And you know, we talk to students about how to make a master to-do list um, of the things they need to do between now and their final exams. And then we show them how to take that master to-do list and break their uh, responsibilities up into different parts on their calendar so they can really space out their learning, space out their um, responsibilities and find a bit of balance during that really stressful time. So that's a really good workshop. You can encourage your student to sign up for it on our website um, when we get a little bit closer to the workshop time. But just to let you know, in the spring, we do these uh, workshops again, and we cover things like time management and learning strategies. So those will be available again this spring. 
But this is another resource, especially with those finals coming up, that a lot of students may be interested in. And it could be something, you know, just on the horizon. Now, probably my favorite service uh, that we provide is academic coaching. And I say that because I spend most of my time uh, coaching students and we love it so much because this is our opportunity to engage one on one with our students here at LSU. And this is a really great opportunity if your student is feeling like the best way for them to address their academic challenges is by having a conversation with someone and we listen to their academic challenges. We help provide very specific strategies. We make referrals to other units and departments as appropriate. Um, but this is just a really good opportunity for students to, um, you know, address these and create an individualized plan. And what's nice about this is uh, we actually have four academic coaches on staff where we meet with students. And it is often that at this point, uh, we do have a good bit of, a, of availability. Uh, we do know that's been a concern with some places, you know, maybe there's not availability for certain services for a couple of weeks out, but for academic coaching, we actually, you know, it's possible that depending on their schedule, they may be able to access a coaching appointment within the week. So um, academic coaching is a really good opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with someone so that we can help them address uh, their academic challenges. And so just to give y'all an example of something that we work with a lot of students on, which would be time management. Uh, so time management, like I said before, if there's a theme for this semester, it is definitely time management, especially with these web-based classes um, and so many asynchronous web-based classes. And so to kind of just give y'all an example of what we do with students is we could pull out. So this is what we call our semester calendar. And what we do is we have students go through their Moodles, uh, Moodle courses, go through their syllabi and pull out all their deadlines and have them put it all in one place together. Because something we are hearing from a lot of students is they're losing their deadlines because they're like, well, for this class, I have to look over here for these deadlines. And then for this class, I have to look over here and click this in order to get my, you know, deadlines and, you know, they're kind of on all these different platforms and all these different locations. So our semester calendar is a great opportunity for them to gather all that information and put it in one place. So they're able to see these deadlines and due dates well in advance, so they can then plan their time appropriately as they go up to these deadlines. Now, this is probably one of our more popular tools that a lot of students use for time management, and we use it in our uh, coaching appointments with students. Uh, this is our weekly planner, and this is something that we use to help a student create a routine. Uh, there was a student who worked with a colleague of mine recently, and she said all of her classes were asynchronous and every day felt like the weekend. Uh, you know, she would say, I don't have a routine, I don't have consistency, I'm falling behind on things, and I just really need help from someone to help me figure out, okay, you know, this is when I take care of my classwork for this class, this is when I take care of my homework. Um, and we work with students because everyone's schedule is so different. You know, we work with students who have jobs, you know, you're, they're a part of organizations. They have family responsibilities. Uh, for some students, it's really important that they do things like, you know, work out four days a week. You know, we work with whatever students are, you know, looking to have in their day. We help them create that routine, help them create that consistency because what that does is help them create a little bit of balance, right? Create that time for your classes so that you can then find those things that you enjoy and you can participate in those things as well. Um, something that's new and kind of exciting for us this semester is we are offering these in editable formats, which means they can download them and type directly into them from their computers. Uh, it used to be they had to be uh, downloaded as a PDF and printed out but that's not the case anymore. So these we've kind of uh, allowed them to be a little bit more flexible with our tools. And so if you're thinking, you know, like, oh, what does that maybe look like? This is a very colorful uh, example of what a weekly schedule can end up looking like, but this just lets you kind of see, you know, like, yes, we're like, we do insist on things like you need time for lunch <laughs> and you have to take a break because some students fall into that realm. You know, you'll ask them, you know, are you taking breaks? Are you, you know, allowing yourself some downtime? And so you build in those times for them, but you also honor class times. You know, if they have asynchronous classes, we schedule them just like they're synchronous. 
we will schedule some study time for them but we also honor those things that are important to them. You know, maybe they really love going to that yoga class. Let's put it on the calendar. So this is an example of how we can help your student with time management. So if that is something that you are hearing from your tiger, please, I would definitely encourage you to um, talk to them about scheduling an academic coaching appointment. Um, something else I want to kind of just talk a little bit about coaching is also how interactive it is. So it is on Zoom this semester, um, but something that's really important for us is making sure uh, we're engaging with the students. So uh, just to share another story is uh, I had a student and he was really having a hard time with this theater class. And he was like, I'm just not understanding, you know, what, you know, she's really looking for and when I'm supposed to be doing things. So I said, okay, you know, I want you to log into Moodle. I want you to open that course. I want you to share your screen. And we opened up the modules. We looked at the work and I said, okay, what she's thinking is this. And we really pieced together and I helped them kind of understand the rhythm of the classes. And then we took that and we created a schedule and we really pieced in those theater pieces very strategically to help them kind of address the class and understand the rhythm of that class. So those are just some of the things we can do in those coaching appointments. And so the next part that I wanna go over are the content support resources that are available to your student. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is called Supplemental Instruction. So Supplemental Instruction is uh, run by an LSU peer leader. Uh, they have taken the class before and they have done very well in it and it's offered per instructor. And they work with that instructor in order to create activities and discussion questions that students in that class can um, work on in order to kind of have a deeper dive into material. So your student would know by now if their class has an SI attached to it. An SI normally meets one to two times a week for an hour to an hour and a half. Um, so that's something that you can check in with your student like, hey, you know, you said you're having a hard time in that biology class. Does it have supplemental instruction? Have you been going to that? Because that's something um, that a lot of our students have indicated that is really helpful for them. So that's supplemental instruction. And then another service that we provide um, are our shell study groups. These are a little different from supplemental instruction because supplemental instruction is happening over Zoom this semester, but our shell study groups are actually happening in person. Uh, these will be located on the first floor of the LSU library. Uh, they are group-based uh, and it's very flexible. So one of the things about SI or supplemental instruction is that the peer leader does create you know, those discussion questions and activities beforehand, while the shell study groups are more kind of based on what the students who attend the study group, what they're looking for, what they have questions about. It's more responsive in that way. And that's gonna be offered per course, not necessarily offered for, uh, per instructor. So for both of these support services, no appointments needed. Your student can just join the Zoom for supplemental instruction at any time, or they're welcome to join the study group and they can just come to the LSU library and join those study groups. If you or your tiger is interested in looking up these schedules and when these are meeting, these schedules are available on our website so they can look those up there. Now, two of our other content support services that we provide to students uh, include our tutoring services. And actually there's a lot of students who don't know that we have two different tutoring services that we provide them with here at LSU. Both are free and they are included. Uh, the first one is the CAS online peer tutoring. Uh, this is also accessible on our website. This is the page that would come up. You would go to our website and then go to our tutoring page. And these do require an appointment. We cover 86 courses, uh, mostly the courses that a lot of our freshmen, sophomores, and even juniors would see. Um, and the way these work is they are via Zoom, and the sessions are about 20 to 30 minutes in length, depending on the subject that your student is looking for. So we always encourage students to make sure you come in with uh, questions, you know, things that you can really focus on so you get the most out of that time. But it is a one-on-one -on -one conversation with an LSU peer uh, tutor. So that is available to students. There is a second tutoring option that is also available to students called Net Tutor Online Tutoring. You can see it kind of below here, the CAS Online Peer Tutoring. 
And what Net Tutor is, is it's a completely different uh, service. So these are not LSU students. These are private tutors. Um, this is what they do. And Net Tutor, there's no appointment necessary. It is all drop in. So your tiger does not have to make an appointment ahead of time. It is online. Um, what they would do is just go into Net Tutor, select the subject they were looking for. And if there is a live tutor available for them, they'll get a little message that says, you know, maybe 10 minutes estimated wait time until a live tutor is available for you. And what's really nice about Net Tutor is that these are these tutors are available typically later in the day. So CAS online, tutor, uh, CAS online tutoring, that tends to operate during normal business hours, while Net Tutor is available typically into the evenings. So if your tiger is doing chemistry homework and it is 8.30 or nine o'clock at night, but, they are, but they're stuck on a question and they need a little support and a little help, they can hop onto Net Tutor, you know, click on the chemistry page, and they might be able to get a live tutor right then. So that's the advantage of NetTutor is they have people available at those alternative times. It's also a really nice option that if they don't have a live tutor available for you to talk to, students can also leave questions and a tutor is going to respond back to them. So they can just kind of what they call drop a question on the website and they'll get a response. So if it's not something they need right in the moment and there's no live tutor available, that's a great way to know your question is still going to be addressed even at a later time. So um, NetTutor is also really good for our upperclassmen because although we cover a ton of courses with our CAS online tutors, they tend to be upperclassmen themselves. So they're not really tutoring in those higher level courses. If your tiger is a junior or a senior, NetTutor may serve them a little bit better because they cover many more advanced courses that are covered by CAS tutoring. And so this last part of the presentation, what I really kind of want to cover um, and let y'all be aware of is LSU CARES and the academic intervention team. Um, this is for perhaps you're sitting there and thinking, these resources sound great. I'm totally going to talk to my tiger about these. However, I don't really know if they're going to actually reach out and use them themselves, right? Um, so what can I do, especially if you know your tiger is having some academic challenges um, and you're concerned that they're not going to take advantage of some of these resources, what can you do? And what you can do is get in touch with LSU CARES. There's an online reporting system. Anyone can uh, complete this report. It can be a student has actually filled out a report for themselves before, uh, but it could be family, it could be friends, it could be staff, it could be faculty anything like that. It's an online reporting system and it gets in touch with student advocacy and accountability. And specifically, the academic intervention team, the AIT report, that is where, that is the report you would use if you have concerns about a student's academic challenges. And what that does is if you submit an AIT report is that it gets in contact with student advocacy and accountability and uh, residency and what it does, residential life, and from that point, they look at what the um, academic challenges are, and they get in touch with the various support sor uh, sources on campus that can then reach out to your student. So I've gotten an email before that said, hey, you know, there's an AIT case support uh, submitted for this student. Please reach out to them. They're having some academic struggles. And then I reach out to that student, and we have a direct line of communication. So the difference there is instead of your student needing to reach out to us, your student is now on our radar and we're gonna reach out to them. So this is a really good option if um, you're concerned about your student reaching out to the resources and you know they're having some academic challenges. And that can cover a lot of different things. There's a lot of different reasons why students have academic uh, intervention team reports. It could be poor class attendance, poor performance. Maybe they're having a difficult time with the class style, the way the class is structured or they're having a really hard time balancing their time in all of their commitments. Um, we've been helping a lot of students with Hurricane Laura. You know, those students, there were several students who had all online classes and they chose to stay home in Lake Charles in the Lake Charles area. And they experienced Hurricane Laura and then we needed to work with them and use our support resources in order for them to continue their academic success after experiencing 
that disaster. We also work with students who have been affected by COVID and maybe they've been ill for a variety of reasons and missed two weeks of, of coursework. You know, we help support them in those cases as well. So we like to say, you know, there's no problem kind of too small and no problem too big. There are, you know, it's potentially possible that LSU has some sources that we can help you um, or help your student through that challenge. So there's a couple different outcomes for AIT cases. Uh, we help identify the resources they need and we reach out to them. Um, we can advise on any action that might need to be taken place further beyond that. And then we actually engage the support units and resources and we engage with the student. So this is the end of the presentation. I just want to draw your attention to our website, lsu.edu slash CAS. If you want to see more descriptions of our services, you can see those there, as well as scheduling, how to schedule those coaching appointments, any tips, resources, our learning tips and tools, anything like that, you can find there at our website. Awesome, thank you so much, Anna. You shared really a wealth of information and, and really helpful resources that I hope our families will go back and share with their tigers. It was really great information. Now to um, really compound on that and, and have students share their experience, we will have a panel with some current students and also one parent of our family council. So to lead that panel, I have Carly Bordelon, my colleague. Hi everyone. Um, so we're gonna start out this next portion by introducing our LSU student panelists that are joining us this evening um, that are gonna answer a few questions about their academic experiences specifically. So to start, um, we have Alex Clay, if you wanna go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Alexandra Clay, or Alex for short. I'm a sophomore at LSU. I'm a kinesiology pre-med major with a biological science minor, and I'm from Dallas, Texas. Great, thank you, Alex. And we have Kayla Gibson. Hey, everyone, my name's Kayla Gibson. I'm a senior this year and I'm studying psychology with a minor in sports studies and I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana. Great, okay, so now that you know our student panelists, let's go ahead and get started with our first question. So Alex, we'll start off with you. So tell us about your experience with the Center for Academic Success. What services and resources have you used and kind of what impact did it make on your experience? Sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> um, I personally love the Center for Academic Success so much because they helped me in probably all aspects of my academic career so far in LSU. Um, I have utilized three out of the four programs that y'all have. I've used supplemental instruction, CAS online tutoring, as well as the Shell Tutorial study groups. And it has literally brought my grades up a whole letter grade even in some courses. So I really love the programs that y'all have there. Awesome. Um, Kayla, you want to tell us about your experience with the Center for Academic Success? Yeah, so I use the SI program and I also use coaching. Um, it really helped me my freshman year coming out of high. I never really had to study that much and I got a huge wake up call my freshman year, my first biology class. So just having that opportunity to talk with uh, academic coach to help me learn how to study and how to manage my own schedule plus going to the SIs going over everything I learned multiple times really helped me get a hang on of everything my freshman year and even now great thank y'all um so Alex next what resources from the Center for Academic Success are you still using that have been really helpful with web-based courses specifically um, I'm currently using the supplemental instruction for my organic chemistry class because, as you know, organic chemistry is a very difficult course at any institution that you take. So I really make sure that I set aside time for extra studying and making sure to go to supplemental instruction. And I feel like if I didn't have supplemental instruction, I wouldn't get the basic understanding of the course that I have now. Great. Okay. Kayla, do you want to share um, kind of what resources you've been using that have been really helpful with web-based learning? 
Yes, I've been meeting with academic coaches because I'm a very in-person learner. So this transition to online school has been a little hard for me. So meeting with academic coaches, kind of getting a feel of what's best for me when it comes to doing school and how to study now that everything's online has really been helpful for me this year. Awesome. And for parents that are wondering and for um, our Tigers tuning in, um, was it easy to kind of schedule those academic coaching sessions? Like what was the process like? Yes, it was pretty easy. I went online and they have a link to where you can kind of look up to see what coaches are available. And you basically just go based on when you're available. They're very flexible with you and you can email some back and forth kind of figuring out when's best. Right now, I met with minds virtually via Zoom, but I'm sure they have many different options depending on your preference, but it was fairly easy to get an appointment. So I suggest if you really need one, you should try to get one. Great, that's awesome to hear. Okay, Alex, last question for you. Um, so what additional advice do you have for first year students with web-based courses? I would say to set up an appointment and to make a scheduling because I utilize um, the scheduling process with a counselor last semester before COVID. And I feel like having an actual person write down each and every class that you have, um, organizational meetings that you have, and setting aside specific time for you to study really helps a lot because you um, are in a bunch of, bunch of organizations, you have classes on top of each other, you have you know your life that you wanna live, you might wanna go work out or do other things, and it gets a lot of bogged down and you get stressed out. So having somebody actually take the time to set aside each study course that you need to have and everything is very helpful to me. So I would say utilize that as well as the supplemental instruction. Thank you, Alex. And Kayla, what additional advice do you have for first year students with web-based learning? Try to find some form of normancy in your day by making a schedule because it's very easy to lose motivation, especially now since a lot of the stuff is online and you get to do it from your room. Just try to form some form of schedule, go to an academic coach to kind of help form that schedule for you. It'll help you stay more motivated. It'll help everything feel a little more normal. And I feel like for me, it made my grades a lot better. So it might help y'all too. Great. Well, thank you two so much for coming out to our webinar this evening and really sharing some great tips with our families. Um, supplemental instruction um, and the schedule, like Alex was saying, laying everything out, that's, that's really great advice for our students. So now we'd like to hear from our family council member. We have Brett Bernard on his experience with supporting his tiger with the transition to college academics and now virtual learning. Brett's the father of a current LSU senior and also has a son who just graduated from LSU. So Brett, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Hi everybody, go Tigers. Uh, I do, uh, I have two Tigers. One is a graduate uh, with honors from the business program. He graduated three years ago. That was Tanner. And my current Tiger is a senior. Uh, he is a pre-med biology major with a psychology minor. Um, his name is Hunter. Um, they both had and by the way, they and myself, we're all from uh, Southern California. In fact, uh, the purple and gold shirt I'm wearing right now is uh, not an LSU shirt for once, but it's actually a Lakers shirt. So, uh, but we're lucky that they had the same colors as the uh, Tigers. So um, they had a fantastic uh, experience at LSU, socially uh, and uh, academically. Um, uh, to the point here tonight, then, I'd like to, to share a couple things that learned in talking with them and dealing with them. Uh, first of all, uh, take advantage of all the resources uh, that have been outlined for you tonight by Anna uh, and by our student panelists. Um, I'm going to say it now and I'll say it at the end. You really have to either be so shy that you never leave your room or you have to not want to succeed, this is your students, for you not to do well at LSU academically. There are so many resources that are available there at LSU um, that it's a shame uh, not to take advantage of those. Um, my, young, my younger son, the, uh, the senior uh, uh, pre-med major, I will mention is also an SI, he's a supplemental instructor right now in organic chemistry. Um, 
what what they used, they took advantage of a number of the resources that have been outlined, as well as several others that I think it's important to mention. Um, first of all, uh, use your peers. A lot of your students, I know both of my students were in the um, academic residence dorms. My uh, younger son, he was a freshman, was in the business residence dorm. And then my, uh, that was my older son, my younger son, uh, as a freshman, was in the um, uh, the uh, life sciences uh, dorm. Um, so they uh, are in those dorms. I think it's now mandatory that all freshmen be in dorms. Um, take advantage of your peers, talk to your peers. Uh, 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 it's harder, obviously, not being in class, but you will see uh, them at, uh, at, the, uh, at the dormitory, at the uh, uh, food tables. Talk to your, your students that are in your classes and study together. Take advantage of your peers. Um, they will probably be having the same issues or they'll have a different issue with a, a, a certain study subject that maybe your student can help them with and vice versa. So take advantage of your fellow students to begin with. Then as I would highly encourage them to take advantage of the CIS services uh, that were outlined, uh, both the online, um, uh, the, the di different opportunities there. What was not mentioned also, though, um, and as a supplement to those two excellent services that both of my sons have taken advantage of, is the departments themselves. If you're having a problem, a problem in the subject, first of all, don't be bashful. Tell your students, don't be bashful. Talk to your professor. And even with my, my, uh, my older son and my younger son, even though he's a senior, I will remind them and they say, oh, gee, I, I think I got this right, or uh, I think I'm having a problem with this. Go talk to the professor. I know it's hard to do as a, as a freshman or a sophomore, but the professors are there to help you. They really are. They're not only there to be paid to be an instructor, they're there as instructors because they want you to succeed. They want the students to succeed. So don't be bashful if you don't understand uh, online. Uh, talk to the instructor or make a, a, an appointment. I know, for example, my older son, the SI, uh, he has both online Zoom uh, uh, help and he also has office hours. I know the professors have the same thing. It's not quite as easy now with Zoom classes to go up and talk to the professor after class, but they are there, they have office hours, they want to help your students succeed. For example, my older son, freshman year, I, he said, oh, gee, dad, I'm going to get a B in the class because I got 89. I said, talk to your professor. Um, and they're not shy kids. I said, talk to your professor, see what you can do. If he'll, if he'll give you an extra point for something, the professor did. So the second resource beyond uh, the peers is talk to the professors themselves. Um, they will outline how you can do better. They will talk to you about your tests, the questions you missed. Um, they, are, they are there to help you. They really are. Uh, also, if the professor's not available or you want a secondary resource, go to the departments themselves. Beyond the CAS, go to the departments, ask for help in terms of what resources they have. They will have um, tutors that are available both free or paid They'll have uh, that, uh, that they can offer, that they have resources that they can offer up for that. So take advantage of your peers, take advantage of the professors, take advantage of the departments. Also then, they can find online, um, as uh, Anna mentioned, there's also uh, other uh, paid tutors or unpaid tutors that are out there available. As I said before, you really have to want to fail with all the resources that are, that are there uh, not to succeed. Um, uh, I would say a couple of other just notes uh, with them, um, listening to what uh, uh, Alex um, uh, shared and uh, is that uh, and Kay Kayla as well. Um, time management and balance, super, 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 super important. They have to be self-disciplined, which is probably the hardest thing for freshmen leaving home uh, on your own. Uh, it's actually a little bit easier, I think, now with not having a lot of football games uh, where they can go to. Not as much partying off campus. They have more time to do that, but at the same time, they have to have a balance. I think the, you, uh, the uh, word that uh, Alex used was normalcy. Find some normalcy there. Do something beyond studying. Uh, even my, my successful older, younger son, uh, who's the, um, the pre-med uh, major, um, have to remind him, go for a run, go, go outside, 
Don't just study all the time. And doing that, it'll freshen up your mind. It'll, it'll be easier for you to, to focus academically if you do have some normalcy there in terms of socialization or uh, working out or whatever you want to do um, with that. Um, be involved. Uh, uh, you parents, you need to be involved, but it's a, it's a slippery course in terms of um, uh, you, you want to encourage them to do it. But as we all know, it's as, uh, as they leave home, this is their time to, to find their own path. But be encouraged uh, to encourage them. Find ways that you can, uh, you know your students better than anybody. Uh, so find ways that you can inquire after the success, what they are doing, uh, and t tell them, remind them to take advantage of these resources. Uh, be engaged, be proactive. And that's for your students to be proactive too. Don't have them wait until the end of the semester and think I have to study. Encourage them to be studying all along the way uh, for their, their, their quizzes, their normal exams, their midterms, and their finals, uh, which gets back to the time management that Anna had uh, identified. Um, I would encourage you to encourage them in that LSU would not have accepted them as students there if they didn't know and think and know for sure that your students will succeed there. So the resources are there. So encourage your students, uh, get down on themselves. It's, it's normal to do that. Encourage them to just buck up and do it. Uh, talk to their friends and work through it. And you need to be positive for them as well. So help them. Uh, take advantage of the LSU opportunities and resources. Um, have them talk to others, you know, in terms of what, gee, I'm, I'm doing difficult with this. What, do, what are you finding? And uh, the three or four or five different resources we've mentioned, not, it's not universal for every student, and, and each course is different as well. Um, a couple of things I would encourage when you look forward after they have all succeeded in their first semester, um, other, other opportunities out there, if they're involved in a sorority or fraternity, those sororities or fraternities talk to their upperclassmen uh, or uh, on, uh, on the campus, talk to upperclassmen in terms of, gee, did you have problems with these subjects? How did you work your way through those? So take advantage of those resources. I know the fraternities, they have resources in terms of study guides from students who've done it before or upperclassmen. So take advantage of those resources as well. Um, um, and then last but not least, uh, don't let them get down on themselves, just encourage them to, to be positive and, and, to, and to work on uh, what we know that they can succeed and, and to take advantage of the resources there. And the last thing I'll offer up uh, before any, any questions, it is a, do a discipline and focus, but have fun while they're there. And um, if any of your students would like to talk to my son who's on campus there, as I said, he's an SI in organic chemistry, but he is a psychology mi uh, minor. If you want to talk to him um, through uh, Lindsay, um, I would encourage you to do so. And she can offer up his contact information if that's something you desire. So with that, um, I'll, I'll shut up and take any questions uh, that um, you all may have or listen to the dialogue. And I'll end by saying, go Tigers, go uh, Lakers, and go Dodgers. <laughs> go Tigers. Thank you so much, Brett. I think it's really valuable for our families to hear from a current Tiger. And you're a very experienced Tiger parent with several um, you know, opportunities for experiences. So I really appreciate, I think you shared, shared some wonderful stories. Um, he mentioned that we're open for questions. And so I now want to open it up. If you have a question for Anna, Alex, Kayla, or Brett, or if you just have a general question about your student situation or how they can su succeed academically, go ahead and put that in the Q&A for Zoom, or you can put it in the comments via Facebook Live, and we will answer those live now. I know they shared some really wonderful information and maybe your head spinning thinking, wow, this is much more than I knew LSU offered and how am I gonna convince my tiger to really take advantage of all of these things? It's a great question. And um, I hope that you got a lot out of what was shared this evening. And Carly is on our Facebook Live. So Carly, if there are any questions via Facebook Live, you can go ahead and hop in.
All right, well, while y'all are thinking of questions, you can still put those in the Q&A or comment on Facebook. I have a few notes that I wanna share with you. So we're gonna pull up our PowerPoint and share that. And as we're doing that, I wanna talk about some of our upcoming webinars that we'll be hosting. So wanna thank our speakers again. They shared such great information. I appreciate that Brett mentioned that if you have a question specifically for him or for his son, who's a senior at Hunter, then you can email our office. The same applies for Anna. She gave out her email address or also Alex and Kayla. You can email our office at lsufamily at lsu.edu and we will connect you with our panelists and speakers this evening. We can also share some great information. And if you had questions or want us to share the links to any of the specific information covered, we can send you a recap email of that too. We have some following upcoming webinars though. And so we'll go to the next slide to show you those webinars. We're gonna be doing these throughout the fall, as I mentioned. And actually Alex talked about the importance of meeting with an advisor. And she was talking about meeting with an academic coach, but to piggyback off of this conversation, the next thing that your tiger will likely be um, thinking about and planning for will be scheduling their courses for the spring semester. That will open at the end of October. And so we're gonna host a presentation, a webinar on Tuesday October 20th, where we'll focus on how to support your tiger with tips throughout the scheduling and advising process, make sure they're on the right track, taking the right courses and when, and that's going to be uh, led by our university center for freshman year. That's through university college. We'll also have some students to share their experience during that. So we're going to do that presentation at 6 p.m. on Tuesday, October 20th. All the details are listed on our website and we're going to put that in the chat and the comments now for you. We'll also have some other topics later this semester. We'd love for you to join us throughout these webinars. I also want to discuss our family association. So Brett mentioned it, being engaged, being supportive, and one of the best ways that you can stay connected with our office and really understanding you know, what we offer, developing a deeper relationship with LSU Parent Family Programs and LSU is to join our family association. The association is a membership-based organization and you can find out all of the information via our website, lsu.edu slash join. It comes with really great benefits, I encourage you to take a look at that family association so you can stay in the know. Um, and then at our next slide, we have a QR code. So it's just a little uh, survey that we'd love for you to take. If you participated today, if you're joining us via Facebook Live or Zoom, you can actually hold your phone up to the screen, that camera, camera feature that you have, and a little link will drop down to our survey. We are also putting the survey in the uh, comments section now so you'll see that in just a moment but if you don't mind taking a moment to share your feedback we'd like to know what you thought about tonight's survey and our speakers how we can help improve this experience for future webinars and we also want to know what topics you are interested in learning more about what kind of information should we cover and what are the questions that you're seeing among your tiger right now we want to make sure these are beneficial and that you're really getting the information and resources to ensure your tiger's success so if you have any questions go ahead and put that in the chat regarding that qr code for our quick little survey and i see that we did get a question from natalie so um, it, it asks the question, do parents have access to Moodle to monitor their tiger's academics? And I know that Anna already responded via Zoom to say parents do not have access to their students' Moodle. So I think what we, you may have learned throughout our online orientation program back in the summer, or maybe if you attended one of our parent panels, we have an opportunity for parents and family members to sign up for my proxy. And my proxy is an opportunity for you to be able to see certain aspects of your student's record that your student allows you and gives you permission to have access to. So via my proxy, if your student selects that they want to give you access, you can see their course grades, their schedule, their fee bill, among a few other things. And so we'll put that in the chat in just a moment, Natalie, if anybody else has questions, please don't hesitate to email us. We can walk you through the my proxy sign up process via our email address, lsufamily at lsu.edu. If you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to send those in. 
I know that Bruce and Cindy Taylor also asked about seeing their students' grades. And so um, we are, you can do that through my, my proxy is the best way to do it. And Kalita is echoing that sentiment saying, encourage your students to do the my proxy and allow access. We know, I mean, Brett talked about it. Um, oftentimes you're the ones paying the bill. And so that's a conversation that you have to have with your tiger due to FERPA regulations. Um, you aren't able to see your students records without their permission, as you likely understand, but you can see that with their permission. Um, I, I said someone's asking if my proxy shows grades prior. Um, so my proxy, yes, it only shows those final grades. That's all that you would have access to. Prior to that, it would be up to a conversation with your student. I will say that students don't always know their grades at every time. Midterms are coming up and those that, that deadline's approaching quickly for students to have their, their midterm grades put into their mile issue account, into Moodle, I should say. Anna, did you have anything to add about seeing grades or progress throughout the semester, if you wanna jump in? Um, no, I mean, I think you really did pretty much cover it. Um, you know, if you really wanna know about your students' progress, then I think uh, probably the best thing is to, you know, communicate with them, especially because as you pointed out with my proxy, you can only see, you know, kind of the grades that are posted and there's going to be lots of things before that point. So, yeah, I think you pretty much covered it. Thank you, Anna. All right, y'all. If you have any other questions, you can go ahead and put those in the Q&A. Um, but I want to put our last slide on here with our contact information one more time. And I want to ask our panelists, Brett, Alex, Kayla, is there anything else you wanted to share that we've touched on this evening? Any final words? I would just, just add, you know, form a partnership with your students. Um, they love you. You love them. Um, you know, encourage them to do well. Let them know that you're only, in, and you're only interested because you want them to succeed. They're, you know, that's why they're there. Um, so form a partnership. I know a little tool that um, that we've used. Uh, my son's mom and I, who are not together, but we have our LSU Academics Club. So, uh, did, hey, how you doing? You know, what's what's going on? And ask your be proactive. You have to be proactive too. You should be. You don't have to be. You should be. Um, ask them. What are your What are your tests that are coming up um, in a roundabout way when you communicate with them. Oh, okay, make a mental of that and then give them an encouraging note before uh, that test. Uh, my, for example, before this call today, I know my son who has taken, he's taking an up level uh, English class. Uh, he had had to do a take home. I asked him how that went and then he provided that as well as shared how he did in his environmental uh, biology class. Um, so if you, if you encourage them, you know, they're going to respond. They love you and they, they respect you. So, um, be proactive, find out what they're, what they come, when they're coming up, wish them luck. And then, you know, in a day or so after, just inquire of them, um, Hey, how'd it go? What do you think? Um, the worst they can say is no. Remember that the worst they can say is no. So if they, if they say no, then say, okay, fine. Uh, you know, in a nice way and, and then move on. But there's no harm in asking, you know, that old saying. I love that, Brett. That brings up a great point. So one of the things that we used to say in our in-person orientation sessions over the summer is that you would end every conversation by talking to your tiger and say, I love you, go to class. Um, don't forget to study, go to class. And we would keep reminding students how important it was. So in every conversation, just politely nudging. Um, I think you, you had a great perspective to share, Brett. I really appreciate that. Thank you for those final words. Okay, well, I want to thank all of our panelists just one last time. Our speakers, you were phenomenal. I think they shared some great information. If you still have questions or you want to continue these conversations, I really urge you to reach out to our office. Our contact information is lsufamily at lsu.edu, and I just put that in the chat. We'll put that on Facebook too. But thank you again. We're going to stick around if you have any questions, but I'm going to go ahead and end the presentation, turn off the screen share, stop the recording. So I appreciate it. We wish your students luck. We hope they have a wonderful semester and that they can take advantage of these resources very soon to ensure their academic success this semester and throughout their entire time here at LSU. Thank you again and go Tigers. <laughs>